Hi everyone and welcome back. So in the last video we talked about all different test cases, the JEST integration with the NestJS and we were able to write the end-to-end -end test cases with all different scenarios like seeding the data, truncating the tables and writing the clean tests for the one single entity in the Postgres. Okay. Now before moving into the 12 factor principles which we wanted to apply to our microservice, we want to deploy this application to Heroku through GitLab. Okay. So what all we need? We need a GitLab account. So you log into your GitLab account and you log into your Heroku account and create a new application. So let's say if I call this as uh, not API app. Okay. Notes nest JS app. Okay, this is available. We are creating this application now. If you are not familiar with the Heroku, then you log into the Heroku account and see all different things which you can do with the Heroku. Here you can populate all the runtime configurations. Okay, and here it is your API URL. This is the place where your application will be available. Okay, and here we can add additional resources. Like if I am looking for Postgres, because I need Postgres for my API application. So I will just add the free version, copy dev. And then once it is available, yes, this is available. Now you can see in the settings, we can see connection URL, database URL, right? And this is the databases created for me, created for my application. Okay, now we can also add the other resources like log entries because we wanted to see the logs coming for this particular API, logs coming out from this particular service. And similarly, there are other services, but for now, let's go with these two. And then if you look into the activities and deployments, we just added some configurations and deploy part. Okay. So there are many ways to deploy this application. First of all, the application name is Notes Nest App, right? So this is the application name. So now we need some, some, some kind of integration between GitLab and this Heroku so that my GitLab should be able to talk to Heroku to deploy this application. Okay. So for that, we are going to look into different things. So first of all, let's go to GitLab and create a new project. And I will say node nest.js app. Okay, so this is a simple new project. We will clone it or what we can do is we will manually copy paste the folders, right? We can just clone this. Let's say I'm cloning this into inside another folder. First of all, just remove all these things. And then I will remove this folder because we already have folder created. Then I can just do git clone. And if I have the credentials correct, I should be able to clone it. Now you can see this app is created now. I just have to do one simple thing is copying. We can do one thing. So just add the target for this application. So we are inside this folder. I will initialize this as a repository. Okay, git remote add origin. Git remote add origin. And then git status. I have a git ignore file there, so we don't need to worry about it. Git add git commit minus m baseline and then git push origin master allow unrelated history or something is there. 
the flag is there come back so what we are trying to do is we already have a brand new repository and we already have a code base but we wanted to push it and it will not allow because the because there is already a commit on the the main or master branch so this is the main branch so what we can do is we can switch to main branch git checkout minus b main and then okay force is declined okay this is a protected branch i got the point otherwise this should not be the problem so what we will go in general and we will remove the protection from this Okay, now we can do the force push and this should work so this is a special feature on the GitLab that uh, some branches are protected and you have to unprotect them if you want to do the force push and I can also now I can create two branches out of it git checkout develop and Let's check out minus b develop branch and then one is a master branch now we'll just do good push origin develop and then one branch is get checkout minus b master i think master is already there but we can just do a get checkout master and then I can get push origin master okay so we have like uh, all these three branches available now you can protect them select branch here we can protect the master and the develop branch at least because those are the branch we are going to use develop is allowed to merge by maintainer allow force push is false protect similarly we can add the protection for master branch because we are going to use develop and master for our development for two different environment and we are going to raise a merge request if there is a new feature is getting released so how we are going to do is we will create whenever there is a change get checkout develop okay we are on the develop branch so how we are going to do is let's talk about the GitLab's git strategy also so this is our github and GitLab This is our project okay we have dev branch and master branch so there are many ways either we can get the feature runs from dev so get the feature runs from dev and then just raise the merge request against dev and once it is merged then sync synchronize dev with master so both are both are updated or what we can do is every time whenever there is a new feature runs you wanted to create you can actually get the feature runs from the master so this is feature one and once your feature is done there is a MR against develop and once your feature is done you have to raise a two MR actually for the feature one one is again develop against develop and one is against master so once your feature is tested properly then you will raise these to both the MRs and whenever you need to write a new feature you have to get it from the master branch so if there is a new feature you have to get the again a new feature from the master branch so I mean in the 12 factor principles having proper git strategy and version control is important so you will get the feature runs from master and then do your coding your feature development it is MR against develop. Okay.
quite and simple or you can also use git flow and all okay so we actually push the code now what we need to do is we need to introduce a gitlab ci yml gitlab.ci.yml because we wanted to have a custom kind of a pipeline which we are going to add here and that pipeline will contain the instructions to deploy the applications to the Heroku. Okay, this is simple uh, Node.js application. So Heroku needs only start script or you can also have a proc file. So I have a proc file which contains this command. So this is the command which will get executed npm run migration run, npm run start prod. And what start prod is doing? Start prod is starting the application using simple node command. Okay. So let's see this. So how this whole CI CD process will work like this is a developer. What this developer is doing. This is the developer is writing the code. Okay. On his system. Let's create a simple laptop. He is writing the he is writing the code and then he is sending the MR. He is merging the MR and doing all those kind of stuff. Okay, he is the guy and what he is doing is he is sending the merge request. So what we are doing is we are using GitLab CI. This is our GitLab CI and we are having one simple GitLab CI YML which contains the instruction okay how to run build test this this current application and where to deploy this this uh, for a particular branch okay and I mean there is a syntax we need to follow if we wanted to write our own GitLab CI YML once this is done and this execution is done on the shared runner either you have your own GitLab infrastructure I mean runner infrastructure or it will use shared runners which are nothing but they will see they will read this particular file and they will see okay you need node.js docker container image and you need postgres as a service it will spin up the container and it will start running your application okay so it can have multiple steps like uh, one is a uh, for the develop branch you can have install npm install build test install lint where you are checking the lintings and then you have the build and then you have a test and then there is a final thing is a deploy. So there are many ways in which we can deploy things. First of all, either you can zip this archive and send it to your target container. I mean target which is like Heroku, EC2 instance or any particular place. Or just SCP to a particular server. So it's like a Heroku is sitting here. We will just trigger the build to a Heroku with this particular code okay so again the whole process will work and then finally it will do a Heroku deploy with the current code base which we are sending like if you don't want it to use CI then Heroku whenever you do the push onto the Heroku remote it always trigger the build and it will start deploying the application okay so what we need here is we also need to run the tests unit tests and integration test right so what we are using is we are using the in, inside a GitLab CI we are using the Postgres as a service there are two things we are using uh, it will be using the node.js container and we will be running the Postgres service on top of it so that because we need to have a test database somewhere in the pipeline so that we can run our end-to-end -end test cases unit test cases are, are fine they need only node.js runtime environment so this is how it is working this step can be totally different in the ec2 environment like on the if you are deploying it to the ec2 instance or maybe on the kubernetes because we have verified the steps now it's just only to push the code and do the npm run start with running the migration if there is any table change okay but here we are using the shared runners instead of this you can also have your register your own runners on your gitlab instance that may be fast because these shared runners are shared among all the developers. So you will get these shared runners to build, test and deploy your application once they are available for your application. So there can be a small delay for that. Okay, let's go back to our code. 
and what we are going to do is we are going to write gitlab yml file so we are going to write like which particular image you want so from i will say okay sorry it should, should be image like which image we are going to use for this particular uh, container and i'm saying is i'm going to use node 12 buster slim this is the image name and then i will be adding the services first of all it should be a dot git gitlab.ci.yml okay then i will be adding a services inside services what all things we have is we will be adding the postgres whatever is the version we are going to use 12.2 alpine and then all the variables so this is our image this is because this is yml and i'm not good at writing it i think this should work single tab and then we have variables we will set all the variables about the database details like what what is username what is a password okay so we will just put all the configurations here which is postgres db postgres password variables okay and then we have so here we will start writing our stages because we have why we might have multiple branches and multiple environments so instead of stages let's say we have a dev we have master let's call them with the environment name dev production and stage these are the number of stages we have for our application okay services now everything looks fine we have multiple stages so let's say you are actually merging your code to the dev branch so let's define first dev stage so it is type deploy because we are going to deploy things stage is dev and what all script you wanted to execute once this happens right all the scripts like i will do npm ci i will do npm run lint i will do npm run build prod and then npm run test and then we have to use deploy so we will find out how to deploy this thing and then this thing we are going to execute only for a particular branch because whenever the merge happens to a develop branch then only execute this so this is develop oh, let's see if there is any error or warning i will validate this yaml so type is deploy stage is dev and these all scripts we are executing here there will be another script that name is that will be the deploy deploy script okay and this is happening only for the dev develop branch similarly there can be a production stage let's add only production So type deploy stage is production all script and this should happen on the for the master branch okay that is the only difference we have now we can just check on the indentation part stage type only only should go with this 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 looks valid to me the GitLab CI YML. Now, what I'm doing is I'm just going to run the, I'm just going to push this onto the master branch and try to see what happens. Okay. 
or let's say git checkout double branch and git add git commit minus m ci yml added for ci process and then we will just do git push origin develop okay so it should like uh, the ci cd process on the gitlab ci looks for this particular file and let's see what happens So will it triggers the pipeline or it will start looking for the resources? Yes, it starts doing something. Let's see, so it is actually using this particular GitLab runner, which is a shared runner and it is using this node buster slim image for our node.js execution environment. Then it will pull up the services like we are, we are looking for Postgres, right? And let's see how it goes. So uh, now we are playing with the CI. Let's see what all errors we are getting. In the first step, when I did uh, post to directly to develop, I got some linting errors, I mean lint setup issue. So what I did is I fixed that and then I pushed the code to the dev branch again. And then I see the problem with the database connection to run e 2 test cases. Okay, so this is how it is working. You can see lint pass, then build pass, then test. And you, you, you already know that whenever, whenever we are running test, we are also, so the unit tests have been passed and now it is moving to the integration test. Before it runs the integration test, it is doing the running the migration. And while running the migration, we can see the errors, right? Because we are trying to connect to this, it should be post Chris 5432. So that I recently pushed. Let's see now in another pipeline. So now you understood, right? We didn't set up these shared runners. These runners we are already using provided by the GitLab. So you can see that all these things in general, I think, or CI CD. Runners, right? So here you can see the shared runners which are provided by GitLab, and we are using the, all these shared runners to run our process. So whenever you do, whenever you write a GitLab CI, CI process runs, it does all these steps, and then we will also do the communication. How the communication will happen? Because what we need to do is we just need to trigger the deployment onto Heroku. We are not copying the artifacts from. Uh, this GitLab runner to the Heroku instance or Heroku dynos. We just need to trigger the build so that the, the latest code can be deployed. So for that we need to establish a communication between uh, GitLab, CI and the Heroku and that we should be able to do uh, using one uh, command uh, that we have to add in the GitLab. So for what, what we are doing for that is we need a Heroku API key in the GitLab CI and the app name. So this is how it works. What we need to do is when we write our GitLab CI. So this step is process. This these steps are common for dev production stage. We don't have. So after doing the test, what we are going to do is we are going to use this deploy command DPL Heroku API. So we need to get the Heroku API key and we need to put the Heroku API key in the GitLab. Uh, GitLab secret variables and your app name Heroku app name or what was our app name was this will be our app name for development and then we will have one app name for the production this is the deploy command which we have to hit Okay, this is not Heroku. Next JS app team production. Let's call it as a SJS API app. That's it. Okay, then uh, we will see the pipeline now. 
if it is working then we can add these configurations okay things are good and things are clean also like everything is good we are able to run the test cases right and this is the migration where it has created the table so everything looks good now we just need to what we need to do is we need to use this deploy command and we need to set these two different environment variables so we need to go to our Heroku console and we need to add the API key so here we can see resources and it should be inside integration so first of all the app name app name we can set up in the GitLab so GitLab CI CD there should be variables right here you expand it add variable this is the key okay the key name is let's go to the code this is the key name So currently we have only one app but there can be two different Heroku app for two different environment like development and production we are testing things with the development okay so I will just put this here this is the key name and this is the value okay you can mask it and we, are, we have added a variable so that whenever the GitLab CI runs they will know what is the value of this particular variable when we push this thing now Heroku API key is another thing which we have to add so add a variable name now these variable name you can add at the global level or at the project level so Heroku API key we need to get so now we need to get the Heroku API key right so what you need to do is go to your account settings and then you will see this option API key reveal this and copy this in a another variable like Heroku API key and put the value I have already done that this is my Heroku API key both are masked that is fine now GitLab CI should be able to use both the keys both the variables Next.js API app development if you have any other application like any other environment then you can just put this and your app name will be Next.js API prod Next.js API stage something like that okay coming back to our CI here we can see that this is the option we have now we are going to execute this command deploy Heroku API API key is Heroku API key so through this API key we, we would be able to execute the API operation on Heroku through GitLab CI and this is the app name against which we are executing this so we don't need to do a Heroku login and all because we already have access to the Heroku APIs through this API key so now I will just do is git add I have added the git commit minus m added deploy phase in CI and then git push horizon develop what it will do is now it should be doing one more step like CI link build prod test and now it will be triggering the deployment for this application and this is what we want right so this is the whole story I will also be adding one particular blog which talks about all these things step by step okay for now it's all about how we do the deployment so the simple notes application now we are able to deploy to GitLab so you can see that we are uh, uh, we are not exposing any kind of environment variables we are putting them in the configuration settings here you can see if we go to the apps then on Heroku also we are managing this kind of uh, environment configurations here you can say node env we can do on other environments you can add node env is a development and if any other environment variables you wanted to add then you can add here like uh, we, we will be using a lot of stuff like rollbar we will be using log entries we will be using new relic we will be using health check APIs so we will be using third party services and for that we have to expose we have to introduce some new environment variables with some values 
like this is the database URL our application is going to use node environment port we are not specifying because port uh, Heroku automatically dynamically selects we just need to pass a option process.env.port and it dynamically assigns the value and whenever the deployment starts you can you can start seeing the activity and we can also check the the logs you can add you can add a lot of resources here like new relic is also there so all these things are like how you can make your application up and running 24 7 all these resources you can add there is a liberto which is making uh, yes it is like a health check it will keep checking your application is up and running by pinging the by just looking at your api endpoints and uh, yes these are pretty much now you can add a few other resources for the log tracing we have uh, log entries for new relic which is application performance monitoring tool right so let's see that in the next video guys this is all about the ci cd now we will apply these 12 factory principles like how we are managing the the version how we are doing the version control with the github gitlab and we are using git and we are we might be using different different branching strategies so that is done second thing is managing the environment variables so you might have already seen we are managing the environment variables through two different files like this is for the test configurations this is for our local development configurations right and we are using dot env module to pick things from here and populate it into, into process dot env and at the, the deployment level also we are not exposing these things at uh, when we deploy these things to aws azure there we use the the vault the secret vaults to store these uh, database credentials and all like in the heroku also we have these settings in which we are putting all the configuration so we are not hard coding it in anywhere in the code everything is uh, secretly kept okay and we are not passing the environment variables from the code base we are not managing any environment variable in the code base okay uh, let's see other things in the next video thanks everyone uh, so the last part we are looking at here and uh, we have added this deploy command right dpl uh, dpl app name and uh, we are passing the api key heroku api key but due to the recent changes i mean if we are using the dpl command in this then we have to that gitlab ci needs to understand what is dpl command dpl is nothing but a, a ruby command and for that we have to actually install the ruby image so what i did is i did this offline what i'm doing here is i split it this into two phases one is that uh, one is the simple uh, install lint build and test okay there we need a node.js image okay then another phase totally i have only two phase build dev and uh, deploy dev you can have as uh, build stage deploy stage build prod deploy prod something like this and both stages are targeting the develop branch okay that is helping me in deploying things i mean in building things building linting and testing and this is only taking care of triggering running a trigger onto heroku build and for that we are using dpl command and dpl command is coming from ruby so we have to install this ruby image and we have to install all this this particular dpl jam and after that this command is little bit changed i was getting error so i did, i changed this so you have to pass the provider the app name which is the dynamic and the api key heroku api key okay so whenever we are doing it we are able to run the pipeline so after a couple of failures finally i was able to deploy this so this was my last pipeline and what we are doing here if we look into a step by step here i was able to install the ruby ruby dev and uh, this particular jam was installed and then we were deploying it to heroku api right and then the rest of the process is normal as the heroku build it is deploying the application right and then we can go back to the heroku terminal to see things here it is we can see the activity that it was deployed right and all the resources now we can actually check log entries we can check we can go to this particular uh, url to check the application status okay and from log entries log entries gives you the overall status how things are working you can see it is running the migrations and then it is starting the application okay i recently triggered another build and let's see how it goes 
so it is deploying the application again i think it is processed so let's see that on the heroku did we resend any trigger in the last five minutes yes my application is live right now what i can do is go to the settings and go to this path and i can just do api v1 okay this will take some time to bring up the application and then we should be able to see the api spec for the application so one another thing which you need to be uh, be sure of when you are running uh, when you are writing main.ts file because sometimes that may be the problem here we are using process.env.port right so if the port is not assigned i think it should be caps and this can be a problem for us because this would be a capital so it will try to identify the port from the heroku heroku dynamically assigns the port and then once the port is assigned our application will be available so let's do this thing again because we did the change So there are a little bit of troubleshooting here and there you should be aware of assigning the port which should be dynamic and you should leave the ports on to the swagger on to Heroku to decide otherwise the default is 3000 okay and uh, this GitLab CI changes which I have done recently I mean I divided into two different phases build and deploy build will just take care of uh, doing the linting testing and all and then deploy will take care of actual deployment using DPL for DPL I need to have the Ruby installation so I created it in a separate stage so I can have a different image for deploying the application okay so it should trigger another build and now you can see that there are two different phases right well first is a build dev and then this would be another is a deploy dev once the build dev is completed it will trigger the deploy dev so similarly you can create n number of stages here these are two stages because for develop branch there are two stages only develop only develop so similarly you just do the copy paste and you create the two another stages for production like uh, i can just add build prod deploy prod and then just copy paste this stuff and here it will be build prod and deploy prod it will run on the master branch not on the develop your app name will be different this will be a production app okay stages deploy prod here the stage is build prod nothing much change right it's just a simple i copy pasted the stages now it will start working now we can see our application is live okay we can ch check the recent pipelines everything looks good and here we are now we are able to do the end-to-end -end setup of the ci cd for any kind of node.js application we just need to make sure few things okay about the the ci cd pipeline gitlab ci yml should be proper uh, like if you are using the deploy command then you need to install the ruby ruby jam and because and another three thing is the proc file you need to have a proc file if you're not using web worker you can put your command here and once you deploy this application to the heroku it will start executing this command i mean it will just discard what you have written uh, in the package.json as, NP, as npm run start it will just execute this command whenever the deployment happens npm run start migration and npm run start and another thing is your ports wherever you are defining the ports always allow heroku to bind the port using process.env.port never hard code a port here otherwise your application will never come up okay now we can see our application is up and running on heroku same way you can deploy any kind of microservice written in nas.js node.js anywhere right because this particular microservice is using postgres for database and we are also using the postgres here you can see now if i i can just do all those kind of stuff like get delete update you can see the data is coming so it is storing the data into the 
Heroku Postgres instance. And, and in the GitLab CI also, we are using this particular service to execute our end to end test cases because end to end test cases are heavily dependent on the database. And we are hard coding these variables because these are the test database credentials. Uh, our test configuration will also showcase the same variables like env.test, API development pass, and uh, start the API testing. So when you deploy this, when you push this application, it will run the end-to-end -end test cases in the test environment against this database instance, which is available on the Postgres. This is a container, so it's like a container to container. This uh, GitLab CI container is using Postgres as an, another container. So if you need to talk to this database, you have to pa you have to use Postgres colon on the port, which we are using in the env.test. You cannot put localhost 5432. So these are, this is overall summary, this is a kind of workshop because it's lengthy, maybe more than 30 minutes. But this is how you can build any microservice, you can write the test cases in Jest and you can deploy it to Heroku or anywhere. Okay, thank you, thank you very much.